In truth, Obama is not simply continuing George W. Bush's policies. He is radically expanding them. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. This film has documented the painful fact that Barack Obama's agenda is the complete opposite of what he has claimed it to be. Now we will reveal what Barack Obama and his controllers' true agenda is. Number one, bring the United States under the complete regulatory control of a private offshore super bank known as the Bank of the World. More than a hundred new taxes are now being developed under the umbrella of curbing greenhouse gases. The new taxes will be paid directly to the private bank consortium. At the producer level, taxes will be paid on farm animals' flatulence. At the consumer level, there will be carbon taxes on all forms of meat, beef, poultry, pork and fish. All cars will be fitted with satellite tracking boxes that will tax driving by the mile. And an added tax will be placed on all fossil fuels, including motor oil and natural gas. All plastic products will have a carbon tax added. Outdoor space heaters and fireplaces are to be taxed. All electricity produced by coal-powered plants will be taxed. Under the cap-and-trade system, citizens will be forced to pay taxes on thousands of products to private cap-and-trade services owned by Al Gore and other elitists. There will be taxes on light bulbs, water, trash pickup, air travel, train travel, bus, ship, medicine, steel production, mining, clothing, laundry, asphalt are just a few of the new taxes to be levied. But to truly transform our economy, to protect our security and save our planet from the ravages of climate change, we need to ultimately make clean, renewable energy the profitable kind of energy. So I ask this Congress to send me legislation that places a market-based cap on carbon pollution and drives the production of more renewable energy in America. That's what we need. The notion of anthropogenic global warming is a fraud. In other words, the idea that the planet is getting warmer and that human activity is somehow responsible is a pseudo-scientific fraud. It's a big lie. It's a monstrosity. Remember the Nazis, they had race science, race hygiene. They said Aryan blood is different from any other kind of blood. This was, of course, idiocy, a fantastic piece of nonsense. Today, we've got something similar. Global warming caused by human activity, and the answer to that is carbon tax plus cap and trade, according to the wishes of Al Gore, Prince Charles, and basically the entire uh, world uh, banking community, the world oligarchy. What they're trying to do with that is to perpetuate the current system where bankers rule the world, financiers rule the world, and the rest of us get the crumbs from the table. But remember, if you try to put on cap and trade and a global warming uh, carbon tax with the idea that you're going to save the polar bears, what you're going to do is destroy human society. You're going to cause genocide on a massive scale. The deaths will be measured in the hundreds of millions and indeed in the billions. Just the idea of global warming means that there'll be no development for Africa, no development for the poorer parts of Southeast Asia, and no world economic recovery of any kind ever in our entire lifetime. So it's important to expose and fight the pseudo-scientific fraud of global warming. One more point about this. You don't need a climatologist to know that this stuff is a fraud. I'm a historian. I can tell you. In the last thousand years, we had a period of very warm temperatures called the medieval warm period, where all kinds of grapes and uh, semi-tropical stuff were growing very far into the northern hemisphere. That was about 1100, 1200. It happened to correspond with an all-time um, maximum of sunspots. Right now, we can say that we're going into another maximum period where there'll be some warming, but we're well within the limits of the medieval warm period. About uh, 1600 to 1650, there was an ice age in northern Europe. The North Sea was filled with ice. The German and Dutch ports and the English ports were filled with ice. That corresponds to an all-time minimum of sunspot activity, the Spürer minimum and the Maunder minimum. So 
This has largely got to do with solar activity. We can see that other planets, not just the Earth, are warming slightly as a result of increased solar activity. But we're well within the minimum. So what the oligarchs claim to be an open and shut scientific case is a piece of pseudoscientific nonsense, and it should be rejected. Number two. The social engineers are fully aware that the Obama craze will wear off quickly, so they are racing to put in place the most oppressive police state control grid in human history. 20,000 battle-hardened regular army troops are now being deployed to patrol the streets of the United States. FEMA is now building giant camps in every region of the country, and the Congress has introduced bills like the National Emergency Centers Act, H.R. 645, which merges local governments and the police under federal control. And as we all know that have watched these things, they're ready for the riots. With these detention centers that are being opened up around the country, with state police training for riot control in the, in the event of economic calamity and food riots, they know what's going on and they're prepared for it. So people better also prepare for it themselves. Anyone that's not prepared for what's going to happen, they deserve what they get. Because there's enough information out there pointing to the problems. And they should take all precautionary actions. Next, Obama ordered the Defense Department to issue DOD Directive 1404.10, establishing a one million person civilian army under his control. Simultaneously, Obama launched USAService.org. The new website deceptively masquerades as a federal agency, but in reality is a recruiting tool building a separate, completely private army outside of government that takes orders directly from Obama's controllers. Barack Obama has refused to rescind Presidential Decision Directive 51, signed by George W. Bush. The directive plainly states, the president is a dictator and that Congress is ceremonial. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. President Obama and his Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel have repeatedly stated on the record that all Americans below the age of 64 will be forcibly conscripted into federal service. Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes with responsibilities. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. Now, it doesn't always have to be uh, service in uniform. One of the things that if you talk to our generals, they are desperate for is a civilian uh, counterpart to our military forces. So is this compulsory then? It, well, you have to, uh, in a sense, it's, it's a required of everybody, 18 to 25, three months, uh, and at some point at that point you do it. Obviously I'm not going to say perfect legislation, we'll work that process through. You can do it during a college right. summer, you right. can do it after Any high school. If you have a demagogue with a fanatical mass movement of personality cultists, who is imposing the program of a group of extreme bankers and finance oligarchs, that's fascism. Obama's transition site, Change.gov, proclaimed that middle school and high school students will be forced to serve the federal government. Fascism is gutter up, streets up, hooligans, thugs, fervently idealistic students, swarming adolescents, just the kind of thing you see around Obama. The way you get a population to enslave itself when the police and the army are no longer enough to do that. So I think that's, that's uh, if you're a left liberal, uh, it's time to open your eyes to that. All young Americans between the ages of 18 and 24 will be conscripted into a paramilitary domestic security force. If Obama has his way, adults and seniors will also be forced into other forms of service for the betterment of the homeland.